This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Bedfred. I'd like to be joined by Sam Jones. Sam, seen you a week ago in London. Here we are in Las Vegas. Didn't know who Joe's trainer was going to be when we last got up. Seen him down here today with Ismail Salas. Talk to me first of all about that link-up. It's a link-up that, was, let's, um, that they've had before. It's, it's a partnership that we, that we started off with. It's where Joe's looked the best and it's what, what, we, needed for, it's what we needed for this camp. Now, Joe, when I spoke to him in, in London, I spoke about the Adam Booth split with him. He said to me, I wanted something fresh. I like to keep it fresh. I know he's worked with Ismail before, but he said he, he also performs better away from home comforts. Do you see that way coming out here, just pure boxing? Listen, uh, most people can say, oh, yeah, there's been an argument. There's been zero fallout at all with Adam. Adam's, Adam's like, I'm sure if he's been in contact with Joe, like wishing him well, like giving him, you know, still give, giving him tips and stuff. So there's, been, there's, no, there's absolutely no... Adam's got his hands full as well. With He's got a huge fight. Josh Kelly coming up with David Avenisi and Mick Conlon on St Paddy's Day. Joe's got to do what's best for him in this camp and, and coming back with Salas is, was the only decision. He's the only man in the world we would have, we would have chosen for this. Lerone's out here as well. I've just spoken to Lerone Richards. He was talking about the little bits he's been taken away from uh, being around Ismail Salas as well. How beneficial is it for him to come out and enjoy this experience and, and be around a world-class coach as well? Yeah, look, we, we, we said to Lerone we wanted to bring him out here. And um, look, people, you've got to invest in these fighters. You know what I mean? If you want, if, as a manager, if you want, you want the rewards, you've got, to, you've got to put the hard yards in. And we, we're prepared to do that. We brought him out here. And he's looking fantastic. If you look at him, he's training with Salas. Hopefully we can come to some kind of arrangement there. Um, for Lerone and Salas to work, to work together, um, put something together. But for now, they're just working together, seeing how they get on and seeing how they gel. But they're looking, Lerone's looking fantastic. We'll come on to what's next for Lerone. Obviously, we'll start with Joe. He's got a huge fight with Daniel Dubois, penciled yeah. in for April. You've, you've moved quite aggressively with Joe from the very beginning. You've made no secret of wanting to face anyone who will take the fight. You've had your frustrations. They didn't believe you at first, but... No, we're not, we're not willing to fight. Joe's willing to fight absolutely anybody, and I think this kind of fight proves it. Because, to be fair, in Dubois's Debar, in defence, he could have gone a different way, Joe could have gone a different way, but Joe's like, listen, get me the biggest fight possible, and that's, this, that is the biggest fight that we can make for Joe right now. So let's, let's do it. Not that it's in the public domain, but I know of a lot of fighters who've sort of knocked back Joe since he turned professional. How nice is it to know the big name that he's, he's craved is sort of locked in, that big fight is locked yeah. in, it's right there, and it's a fight that can catapult him towards the big boys? Yeah, it's, um, listen, the fight wasn't, I wouldn't say it's easy to make, like what people keep saying, but I think the, the bar wanted the fight, the bar believes he's going to win, Joe believes he's going to win, that's where you get the, the massive, that's when you get a, an, an explosive fight, and that's what, that is what you're going to get, and Joe is going to win the fight on April the 11th, I've got no doubts about it in my mind. Last time I saw you on that media day in London, you'd been doing sort of the, the, the radio, you'd been on talks, you'd been yeah. on television as well, and then we came to that press conference as well. Yeah. A lot of heads were turning at sort of the, the nature of the comments that were going back and forward all day. I think, I think they'd both had a fair few coffees in the morning, it's fair to say. Joe had about 15 coffees that morning. I said, you need to get some coffees down here, otherwise, all the, otherwise I'm going to get a load of stick after this for being gobby. But yeah, Joe did, Joe did really well. He, he, was, he, handled it, he handled it fantastic. He spoke more than ever, didn't he, on that day, like Good Morning Britain. I was kind of winding him up in the car. I was like, Joe, you need to spend that. He was getting annoyed with me. But yeah, he's, um, listen, yeah, he's, he's getting better. It's, listen, it's not always easy. Joe, when you've got a cap, some people, it comes naturally having a camera shoved in their face. And people have got to remember, Joe's got a degree. He's not, he's not, he's not some st stupid, stupid idiot. He's, he's far more intelligent than I've ever been in my life. So it's, uh, it's, it's getting settled in front of camera. I do believe he's getting a lot better now in front of, uh, in front of a camera, Joe. So. Yeah, we did see them sort of both come on their sh out their shell, so to it's speak, on that day. Yeah, that, I was about to ask you about Daniel's demeanour that day. He was talking, yeah. to, he was talking to Joe's mum in the crowd. He was saying, "Bring your sleeping bag." Yeah, what did you make of his demeanour? I thought he was a bit. He was just like a, a kid, not thinking before he's opening his mouth. Do you know what I mean? I think he was probably told, I don't know, to to, 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 I don't know, to speak a little bit more, but I don't think he realised what was quite coming out of his mouth when he started. On Joe's mum's obviously blindness was a bit was a bit much, but. I don't think we, me and Joe were like looking at each other. Like, did he really just say that? Like it was hard to like process what he said. But look, he's 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 already he's been on about Joe's um, downplaying Joe's amateur achievements and Joe's only beating kids and stuff. Well, there's going to be another kid on the list on, on April the 11th. I can I can tell because it's too soon for him. But, I, but as as I said and as I alluded to on the, on the day, I, I can't say I don't rate Danny the Hot. He looks fantastic, doesn't he? Like he's done everything everything right and everything that was asked of him. But I, 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 as I say, people can say whatever, I, whatever they like about Joe. I know Joe's, Joe's ability, and I know what's in, inside of him. And he's, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna, he's, it's all gonna come into fruition on, on, on April the 11th. I really do believe that, and you're gonna see his best performance. A couple of the comments made in the press conference. Frank Warren, um, 
you sort of addressed Frank and said you're, you're promoting both of these guys. It seemed a pretty clear split as to who was sort of siding with who up on that table. Did, were you at all surprised that Frank appeared to be taken one side of the? No offence taken either. Frank's got Frank's been with Daniel from the beginning. Um, he's Joe's Joe's someone he does promote and he do and listen he does a good job. We can't we can't I'm not going to here to disrespect Frank. Frank's done a good job, but that's his boy, isn't it? That's his that's his golden goose. Joe's the stepchild of the relationship. That's what's what he is. He's the stepchild of the relationship. Daniel's the Daniel's the favourite son, and how do you how do you become the favourite son? You chin the you chin the, the golden goose, don't you? That's what's going to happen. In terms of undercard, I was speaking to Lerone there. He said his next fight will be for the WBC silver. Do you yeah. expect it'll be on that bill? I would have absolutely loved Lerone to fight on the on on that card, but I don't I don't think it's gonna I don't think that's gonna that's gonna come to to fruition. But he's gonna fight in May, and hopefully it's gonna be for the WBC silver title. Mm -hmm. And then we can push Lerone on. Look, Lerone's, Lerone's ready for everyone. I've told him like before, like you've you've only seen what's the first gear of Lerone. And I say if you watch him, we, we would have seen him spar earlier. He's got he's got gears to go through. He's a really special talent, Lerone is. And I hope for his sake it's, it's going to come out. As I say, especially in his next fight, he's going to have to because the kid the, the kid that holds it, the Uzbekistani, I no I don't I can't I, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. But he's a good fighter. We've watched him. He's a very good fighter. And Lorenzo's going to have to be on his A game to, to win that fight. And then after that, we want the big names. We want the big names. Lorenzo's 27 years old. He's in the prime of his life. We want to, want to get him some big fights. Something Lerone and I spoke about, he's telling me that maybe he needs that, that next level or that bit of fear yeah. going into a fight for us to see the best of him. Do you think we will see the best of Lerone Richards when he's in, at that level where he does have the little bit of fear? Well, well, it has to be. I think the Lennox Clark fight, I think Lerone from, uh, to Lerone's own admission, I wouldn't say you underestimated him, but... It was all like he was winning on autopilot, and he kind of switched off towards the end. And then, and then it, the fight was Lerone clearly won the fight. Do you know what I mean? But it was, it was closer than it needed to be. Do you know what I mean? And he had, he had a, he said it's a good chance, a main event on BT Sport, and the performance should have been better. But there's so much more to come from him. There is so much more to come from him, and uh, we're gonna, you're gonna see it. Yesterday, I was with someone that you've been sort of singing the praises of for quite some time, Guido Vianello. I was yeah. down there at the team, Barry Jim. Yeah. Guido sort of telling me he's getting ready for an appearance out in Canada, yeah. wanting to keep busy again, keep getting the name out there. How excited should we be about that young heavyweight? I'm, t I'm telling you, he's such an impressive, and I say he's such an impressive person, like um, from, from, from everything. He puts in 100% from everything, from his training, his studying. Um, he, say he, had, he, know, he knew no English a year ago, and um, he's like you he spoke to him now. He's English, his English is very good now. Still not perfect, but he's, he's, he can have a full conversation with him now. And with that kind of dedication and, and how he's improved, and he's adjusted his style. You're going to hopefully have a look, have a look at him on. Um, he's got a TV slot on ESPN, so you can have a, have a look at him and look at his improvements. Guido can go right the way, all the way. He can go. As I say, look, we're, we're, we're blessed to have him, um, be able to have him here for, to help Joe out for this for this camp as well. So they've, they, they've sparred many rounds together, Joe and Guido, and uh, they bring the best out of each other in this, in this spot. You've watched Joe spar today a few yeah. rounds today. You were lucky. I was like, oh, he snuck in. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's Joe's first spar back for a while. He was shot today, and we're going to spar Guido on Thursday. And um, look, Guido, Guido's going, going, to the, going to the top. Now, I'm not going to sit here and claim I've watched all his spars, but Guido has sort of shared a ring in sparring with a lot of world-class yeah. heavyweights. Joe, Joseph Parker, Tyson Fury, up in Big Breath, I think the first time he was that he sparred with Tyson. Gassiev, there you go. Yeah. By all accounts, we've heard you know, positive things. He's been holding his own with these guys. Yeah. How much confidence do, do you sort of take from that as someone looking after him, that he's already holding his own with these level of fighters? People think, oh, yes, because my, my, the way I am with my fighters, I, I'm just like, they're, they're my family, they really are. Like, like, I love, love them all. Like my, I know I'm young, 31 myself, but like, they're like my kids. You know, do you know what I mean? But with Guido, he is a special, special talent that's only going to get better. And as I say, I've seen him share rounds with Joe. I've seen him Tyson Fury, and he more than holds his own. More than holds his own. He's only going to get better, and he's going to be a terrific addition to the heavyweight scene. Now, obviously, your attentions are in Las Vegas right now. Yeah. But Cody Davis back home against Umar Sadiq this week at your call. Yeah, you say there you wounded. Are you going to be facetiming him straight away and keeping one eye on the telly as well? The telly, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be getting up. I'm going to watch it on TV, and I'm going to shout and scream at the telly like I always am, like a like a lunatic. But I am gut. I'm, I'm gutted. I know people think, oh, he's here watching Fury Wild. I'd much prefer to be in your call watching watching Cody um, become a mandatory get a mandatory position for the British title.
does that fight springboard Cody into, you mentioned that, obviously moves him in line for the British title, but does he need to look good as well? How you win, let's be, let's be, let's be real about boxing. It's, it's not just about sometimes getting the win. Sometimes the win isn't good enough. It's how you win. And I like Umar Sadiq, by the way. I've been having some com f f funny conversations with him. I respect him massively. But Cody has to be able to deal with Umar Sadiq if he's going to go on to do the things we expect him to and his coach, Gavin Reese expects him to. We believe Cody's going to be a world champion. You have to win, and you have to win in style as well because the fans are, don't want to just see a, a cruise control uh, points. points. Let's, 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 let's make a statement on uh, this Saturday. And from what I, Gavin's telling me and what Cody's telling me, it's going to happen. Now, Sam, before I let you go, on to why Rob and I have flown out to Las Vegas, yeah. Wilder Fury 2, at the end, other than to speak to Joe and yourself. Yeah. <laughs> there happens to be a little heavyweight world title fight yeah, yeah, on the same fight, week, so it's worked out quite well. Biggest heavyweight fight since what? It's the biggest heavyweight fight in the world. It is. It's the biggest. No disrespect to, to Anthony Joshua because he's, uh, as I say, the, the 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 face of boxing is the AJ. But this is the big. This is the big one, isn't it? This is the big one. It was a controversial decision last time I fought Tyson. I fought Tyson more than won that fight. Uh, as I say, I love Tyson to pieces. But Wild is Wild is an animal. He's a horrible. He's just horrible, isn't he, Deontay Wilde? He's got that equaliser that can take you out any second. But I, I, I'm backing Tyson to win on, on a. On a, on a points decision with a few scary moments. You've been out here a few days in Las Vegas. You've sort of been able to absorb that fight feel. We're just sort of creeping into fight week now. I couldn't believe how much promotion there is out here for this fight, whether it's been on the broadcasters, all the posters out here. Try and sum up for everybody what it's like out here. It's a heavyweight fever right now. I've been fortunate in my life to, to have been around for a few big fights. I went to the last one. Joe was on the last undercard. But this promotion here has been absolutely amazing. If you've seen him, if you've walked through the casinos at the MGM Grand, that is, I mean, for Tyson and he's like, for someone who's like his dad, John Fury, it's, it's, it's a shame he can't be here yeah. to see because his son is lit, is lit up in the last in Las Vegas, and it's an amazing achievement for both guys. You know what I mean? Because both both guys are good guys. Deontay's a really nice man. He's always made time for Joe and, and, and myself, like when we've when we've come across him. Um, it's, it's a wonderful achievement for both of them, and it just the, the best man's going to win on the night, and I hope it's going to be Tyson Fury. We've spoken, and a lot of people have spoken about the adjustments Tyson can make and the adjustments yeah. he will make with Sugar Hill. That said, what adjustments can Deontay Wilder make this time around? I think I think Deontay Wilder is going to have to take more risk this time because I think last time that he was he was waiting and waiting and waiting, and, and I do think you need a little bit more than that to to, to beat Tyson, uh, someone like Tyson Fury, who I think is the most skilled heavyweight in the world, because it's, it's like the most skilled heavyweight against the most dangerous heavyweight. Deontay Wilde is arguably the biggest puncher in heavyweight boxing history. If you look at the, the statistics, people might disagree with that. But he's, 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 when, he, when Deontay Wilder hits you, you stay hit, don't you? He could, he could go to a local zoo, lean over the fence and knock a wild animal out with that power. Mm. So Tyson's going to have to just stay, stay focused for every second of the round. And, and look, Tyson's comprehensively outboxed him before when he was out of shape. So there's no reason why he can't do it again. But when you say about adjustments, Deontay Wilder has to make adjustments because, in my opinion, he lost the last fight. But is he capable of doing that? Probably. You, 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 but Tyson's also going to up his game because he's going to be fitter, he's going to be sharper. And he knows he's not in there with, a, no disrespect, like a, a Tom Swartz. He's, he, Tyson's going to be fearful of... of, of you know, I think you need a bit of fear. He's going to be a bit fearful of that right hand that can go off like a rocket launcher at any minute. But it's going to be a great fight, isn't it? I so, we're very, very excited for it. We're here to do, to do our thing, but we're very, very excited. We're going to be rooting for Tyson. We're expecting Tyson to come in a little heavier this time yeah. round. It was interesting in the, in the BT build-up show, John Fury said last time they didn't want him to take that fight at that time. He was weak as a kitten. He was still training to lose weight rather than to prepare. Now he's came in that bit heavier. He's not worrying about weight loss or, or getting back to where he should be. Do you see it as a good thing that maybe he's a bit more solid? I don't. I, I just don't know. I think Tyson likes likes to box at eighteen and a half, nineteen stone. Like he's. He, I think you look at some of his best performances. That's probably when he's been a little bit heavier. But against against Wilder, John. I remember John Fury telling me he doesn't want him to take the fight. But it just shows how good he is, doesn't it? Like he can come in and like look, look what Wilder's doing to people like Ortiz. I know Ortiz is a hundred years old, but he's still a dangerous heavyweight. Wilder's smashed him to pieces twice. Um, but it just, it just credits how good Tyson is, wasn't it? That he came in after three, two, three years out, comprehensively outboxed him. And, um, well, he walked, onto a, he walked onto a scary one at the end and he rose, didn't he? Like, like no, no one even understands how he did that even now. But it's just going to be a great fight, isn't it? It's two, it's two heavyweight titans going at it. 
we are. It does feel like we're in the midst of a, an iconic heavyweight rivalry. Yeah, like that it. Tyson has said um, in regards to you know if he gets the win, undisputed the t the title of undisputed means nothing to him. He's not bothered about becoming he undisputed is. champion. Yes, do you, do you believe him? No, I don't believe him. I don't believe him. I don't know in Tyson how I know him. It, it means it means it means a lot to him. Like he's. Tyson's legacy is always going to be he beat Klitschko. Yeah, that was the man. He beat the man that beat the man. He went there. No one gave him a prayer and he went there. And I remember telling everybody, oh, he's going to win, he's going to win. And I was fortunate enough to be around him around that, around that time. The, the Wilder fight was an unbelievable achievement because he won that fight. Uh, he just didn't get the decision. And then, look, this, 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 this kind of fight, I think T Tyson's, what's he got to do left in the boxing? Wilder, Anthony Joshua, what does he need to do after that? He cemented his legacy as the best heavyweight of this era, so and I believe he, and I believe he can do it. Sam, I've kept you for almost 20 minutes now, so I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for having us down. We've managed, like I say, we've flown all the way out here to speak to yourself and Joe. We've happened to tie in while the Fury too as well, so not a bad week. But best of luck with training camp. I'm sure we'll see you close at the fight.